Data Skeptic is the official podcast of dataskeptic.com, bringing you stories, interviews, and mini episodes on topics in data science, machine learning, statistics, and artificial intelligence. Today's topic is deep learning. So Linda, what does this phrase mean to you? You must have heard about deep learning in the news and things, huh? Nope. Do you know what a neural network is? No. Have you heard that term before? Yeah, you say it pretty often. The last time we mentioned, it reminds us of the brain. That's right. And do you know much about how the brain works? I don't. Well, you've heard of neurons, I'm sure, right? Mm-hmm. So a neuron is just a cell that takes in a bunch of signals from other neurons, electrical signals, and then it decides if it wants to transmit its own signal or not. Just decides. Yeah, based on the inputs. I'm not a neurologist, and I've probably done a horrible job describing that biologically, because neural networks, in the computer anyway, they're sort of loosely inspired by the brain. Uh, that's kind of where the basic idea came from, and they're vaguely like the brain, but they're just these mathematical ideas, actually. In a neural network, in a computer, think of it as a node, just this idea that has a bunch of inputs, and in it sums them all up, or usually it sums them all up, and then it applies some function to them, and then it transmits that as an output. So this is similar to logistic regression we talked about last week. Well, let me show you uh, a little game I put together to help teach this concept, all right? So Kyle drew four columns, and then in the left column it says one and four. And on the right column it says ten and eight going vertically. So the two inputs are the one and the four, and then you want to get this output that the answer is ten and eight. Okay, Kyle has four little cards, Mm -hmm. and you're supposed to overlay it in the two remaining columns of the game. You take the far left number and you input it. And on the cards, it tells you whether it's multiply, you sum it, then divide it, and then it will output final answer. And so you're supposed to put the cards in the correct order to get the output on the other side of the card. Mm -hmm. So you're basically supposed to fill in the blanks. And there's going to be a picture of all this on the sh- in the show notes. Actually, go over to dataskeptic.com and find the pictures there. So anyone who wants to play along or just see this game can see more of it. But basically, I've given you what amounts to an algebra problem, right? I told you the inputs, and I told you the outputs, and I'm saying figure out what goes in the middle. Mm-hmm. Let's do a simple one having nothing to do with the game. So I'm going to tell you examples of inputs and outputs. And they're all going through the same function, but I'm not telling you what the function is. You have to guess, all right? Okay. So input is one. Mm -hmm. Output is two. Mm -hmm. Input is three. Mm -hmm. Output is six. Input is four. Output is eight. Yeah, you're just multiplying it by two. There you go. You solved that puzzle. It was not difficult. Now, what if I gave you a problem that instead of just multiplying by two, the actual answer was multiply by two, then square it, and then divide by 16, and then take the tangent of that, and then uh, raise it to the power of six, and that's your answer. It may not be difficult, but I would probably need a calculator and some time, as it sounds tedious. Yeah. There are simple math functions, like doubling, which is the one I just gave you. And there are more complicated math functions, like look at all the pixels in an image and determine if it has a cat in it or not. Now, image recognition is just a lot of algebra on scale, or a lot of arithmetic, actually, once you have the problem solved. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just heavy, heavy heavy-duty computation. What does it compute for? Neural networks are collections of nodes, and they all take different inputs. So if we think of them as being in layers, you had a like a zero, well, I guess a one layer problem I gave you initially. You just, you know the weight, which is two. So you take the input times its weight, you get the output. But now the problem can have a lot more inputs all at the same time. And the nodes can each then have many, many more inputs. So I've given you a more complicated version in the game where there's two nodes. So each node takes both the inputs, sums, multiplies them by something. Those are the weights, sums them up, and then puts them through a function. That's what every neuron does, basically. Sum them up, put them through a function. And for simplicity's sake, our function is just divide by two. So now you know that there's a process from input to output where you start at the input, you multiply by some weight to both of them, you sum it up, and you you get the value of two other neurons. Then you do that again through another layer, and then you can get the output. So how much harder of a problem is this to you? Well, it seems that every node, there's two things going on, and you push it out, and then you have two more things going on. So there's at least five steps for every number. And I have given you how many possible cards? You've given me four. 
Linda knows the input and the output layers. There are two hidden layers of neurons in the middle, but I've given her four cards. So Can they be switched in order? No, no. So the problem is easier than that. So the first slot, the first layer, the first hidden layer, it has one of two possible values. And the second hidden layer also has one of two possible values. So you basically got four combinations here that you have to solve. You could Is it four? Yeah, two and two. Okay. So now if you wanted to just brute force this, you could do it, right? You could swap them out into all four combinations and run through a little bit of arithmetic and figure out which two cards are correct, right? Mm-hmm. So actually maybe see how easy that is. Go, go through that exercise. Let's see if you can get it right. Well, so I just figured it out. And with these two combos, they did not turn out the way I thought they would. I All just right. completed them. <laughs> so what I will do next for brute force is well, first, to switch wait, them. First, describe your strategy. How did you try and how did you guess and how did what did you do wrong? I did not guess. I simply just put the cards down and then I did the you arithmetic. The how many steps did you have to take? Like I said, five for every one, so ten. Okay, so you took ten steps, however you're counting steps, for one configuration. So worst case scenario... You're going to do, we have four combinations. You're going to do it four times 10, 40 steps here, right? Yeah, but I probably only need to do two. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I could figure out the rest by looking at the sums. All right, let's see. Let's see you work through it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Can I put that in a loop and make it? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's on key. <laughs> Well, I'll auto-tune it for you so it sounds good. I don't need auto-tune. I've been taking vocal lessons. <laughs> well, we'll see what the auto-tuner thinks. Do, 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 do. Woohoo! I did it. Do, do, you do, solved do, it? Do, do, yep. Lucky you. So it only took me, I guess it took me 20 steps. Now uh, I'm going to give you another problem. This time it has 10 inputs, 10 outputs, and 6 layers. What? Yeah. Let me see. <laughs> What? All right, so I'm Your handwriting's awful. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have 10 input nodes, 10 output nodes, and six hidden layers. I'm going to go out for lunch, and you try and solve this while I'm gone, okay? I don't know. I wanted a nap first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the second one is just for, for pretend. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is when you have very small neural networks, like I just gave you, you can kind of solve these things by hand. You can. The goal of it always is to try and find the optimal weights. Now, actually, I made this pretty easy for you because I gave you combinations of what the weights were. What are the weights? What are, what are weights ah, to you? Good question. Each of those places where I said the output of this node you multiply by some number, that's a weight. Now, I made this a little bit easy for you by giving you cards that already had picked the weights, right? And one of my cards was correct in both cases. What if I hadn't told you the weights and you, the, the options of what the weights could be? Well, I wouldn't know how many steps. I would just make it up. I'd be like, oh, one times 10. So there I, I'm done. <laughs> well, oh, that's interesting. Um, how do I know if I'm right or wrong? Well, so then that becomes, that's a really good. <laughs> okay, so that's a good point. This is because I gave you one input and one output. But in general, you would be learning multiple inputs and multiple outputs that all have the same function applied to them. So now in this example, I, like I was saying, I gave you the weight. Yeah. Now, how much easier was this for you than if I'd asked you to find the weights on your own? Oh, a lot easier. How long would you have been here if I didn't give you those weights? Mm, but I have everything else. Yep. Well, you have the inputs and the outputs. Yeah. Well, probably would have been here at least 30 more minutes. At least, yeah. That's the tricky and interesting thing. Once you have the weights, it's pretty easy to compute how the model works. But coming up with the magic set of weights, like what are the perfect weights? How do we do it? That's the challenge that algorithms and deep learning and different techniques in deep learning need to be invented for so that we can find them in practical amounts of time on the available data and solve the problem pretty efficiently. And that's what the whole field of deep learning research is all about. Weights? Mm hmm What? Yeah, it's just find the weights. That's so just not magical. <laughs> well... I mean, I'm disappointed. If you want me to put some magic in, I'll talk about neural architecture and how they construct these things. Um, saying all deep learning is is finding weights is true in the same way that saying all painting is is putting chemicals on canvas. So would you regard this as a difficult problem? Um, I could make something up. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, then you ought to apply for a deep learning job. <laughs> I'll make something up that simple. I wouldn't overthink it. I think your little strategy over overthinks it. So I would make it very simple and go two plus two is two minus three. Then you get the number. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you saying there's no other way to get to these number inputs and outputs unless well, it's your problem? Because that's not true. I don't think we're going to be talking about the ways in which you might do this in the coming weeks. We're going to talk about RNNs and convolutional neural networks and back propagation and the vanishing gradients and all these interesting neural network topics. But today, what I want to do is more establish what neural networks are, and deep learning is just basically neural networks that have many, many layers in the middle. The problem I gave you had two layers, but these can have pretty much any amount of layers you want. Now, a lot of deep learning is about how you set these up, like I was saying, neural architecture. Maybe you could speculate if you were going to build up one of these, regardless of what would motivate you to do so, what are some of the choices you would have to make? Well, you had to decide that you were going to sum it, and then you mm -hmm. had to decide which steps and what order, mm -hmm. which nodes connected to which, mm -hmm. and then the weights, and how many layers. Yeah, and, and even a few more things potentially. So I made a lot of choices in constructing my neural network, and that's actually what a deep learning person does a lot of. They have to decide how to structure their neural network and hope it gets a good result. So that's why also there's a variety of different approaches in deep learning and different things like gating and, and uh, LSTMs and stuff we'll get into in the future. But all these little tricks and stuff are all basically there to make it possible for you to find those elusive weights that solve your problem for you. And uh, there's different ways of configuring these things that all have different advantages and disadvantages. And that's largely the study of deep learning. Well, my final thoughts are, this is kind of like algebra, but yeah, with yeah. more layers. So in my opinion, algebra is all you need to know. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, linear algebra. There's a, there, you're exactly right. Your instincts are good. There's a ton. We represent these algebraically, absolutely. And then we take advantage of interesting things we know about algebra and calculus to make it possible to solve these things quickly. But that's a little bit more advanced. We'll get into that probably in our interviews and stuff like that. That's how you end all minis. <laughs> <laughs> For reasons that you won't get into. Unclear if you're an expert or not. <laughs> well, they have to keep tuning in to find Unclear. out, I guess. Yeah, next time uh, I'm, I'm a skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go, I want to share a quick word from our sponsor this week, which is, again, the Data Science Association. You might recall uh, two weeks ago when I talked to Serene, who's back with us today. Hi, Serene. Hello, Kyle. You guys have been working hard on getting ready for the upcoming conference. Tell us when and where that is. So the Dallas Data Science Conference 2017 will be held at the University of Texas at Dallas on February 18. And this time, we also invited Kyle, the host, to be our one of our speakers. We are really glad that and honored to have you joining us. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really excited it could fit my schedule, so I'll be there as well. So my talk is going to be titled, Are API Services Taking Over All the Interesting Data Science Problems? Serene, can you tell us who else people can get to hear? Besides having Kyle to be at our conference, we also have speakers from IBM talking about the cases on real-life application of analytics. We also have Clarity Solution Group. Her name is Milton Ballin, and she will give a talk on image processing as a part of the big data initiatives. Another speaker from EMC Dell, and the topics will be helping business leaders get over their learning curve in advanced analytics. This conference will feature a wide variety of data science experts from industry leading companies such as EMC Dell, IBM, and Amazon. I'm looking forward to hearing a lot of those talks myself. Serene, are there any tickets left? We only have 30 tickets left, so if you want to join, purchase the tickets now. Yep, good advice. Where can they go to do that? You may register at dallasdatascience.eventbrite.com. Serena, what's this going to cost people? For student tickets, it will be $40, and for general admission, it will be $60. Once again, that's dallasdatascience.eventbrite.com to get your tickets. I hope I get a chance to meet some of you Saturday, February 18th at this conference, so come up and say hello.